In the previous video, what we saw was how we could look at signals that are constantly oscillating, signals that are functions of time, and describe them in terms of cosine functions. And if you remember, we had an amplitude, a frequency, and then a phase delay. And the challenge we're going to run into is that we're going to have circuits that have resistors, capacitors, inductors, all of our sort of normal components in a circuit. And at times, it's, it's really difficult to deal with a function that looks like that, a function that has trigonometric functions in it and is time-based. And so it's rather difficult to do our normal circuit analysis techniques with that type of signal. So what we're going to talk about today is how we're going to transform a signal like this that is in the time domain and move it into an equivalent but different kind of signal that we're going to call a phaser that is in the frequency domain. So we're going to move from the time domain to the frequency domain. And in this frequency domain, our function is no longer going to be of time, but is actually going to be a function of frequency. So Vs in this representation at the bottom is in terms of frequency and no longer in terms of time. And over the next couple slides, what we'll do is sort of go over the analysis of how to move from the time domain into the frequency domain. Now, where do we start in our movement from time into frequency? Um, to begin, we have to talk about sort of an arbitrary signal that's based in time. So imagine I've got some made up signal that is a function of time. Uh, thanks to our friend Fourier, who was an 18th century French mathematician, what he said was that any sort of periodic signal can be turned into a series of sine and cosine functions that sort of all get added up. So we can have a bunch of cosines of different values and a bunch of sines of different values, but when we add them all up, what we finalize with is an approximation of this original time-based function. So this ability right here from Fourier is going to be fact number one. Now, for fact number two, we're going to have to go even farther back in time to our old friend Euler, who was a 1700s uh, Swiss mathematician, and use his relationship that said that if I have some function that is a bunch of cosines and sines, that I can take that function in its uh, sort of sine and cosine addition form and turn it into something in a polar form. So if fact number one is due to Fourier, then sort of fact number two is thanks to Euler. And if you remember back to some of your math classes, um, you may remember that Euler's identity here dealt with imaginary numbers. And we do have imaginary numbers in this, except I have represented them as J. Um, because we're sort of in an electrical engineering and a circuits course, it is sometimes less confusing to use the letter J to mean the imaginary number than I, um, because I often means uh, current. So in this course and in lots of electrical engineering courses, you will see that the imaginary number is represented in terms of J rather than I, but don't freak out in the sense that there's a new variable we've come up with. We're just trying to keep things clear between current and some sort of imaginary number. Now, with these two facts in hand, I can use sort of rule number one to take a time-based signal and transform it into a bunch of cosines and sines. And then I'm gonna use rule number two and then transform all of those sines and cosines into this exponential function here. And so this type of analysis that we're about to do is called phaser analysis, where we take our time-based functions and turn them into a function 
that is based on frequency and is in uh, the frequency domain. So the way that we're going to make this work is that we're going to have some sort of time-based function that is written in terms of a cosine. It could be also in terms of a sine, and we'll see in a minute how to change them, but this is the standard form of a sinusoid equation that we've been talking about in terms of having an amplitude, a frequency, and then also a phase. And so step one of this is to apply uh, Fourier's theorem and write this as, okay, delete, delete, starting over, and we'll have a pause. Okay, starting over on this slide in three, two, one. So the way we're going to go about this is we're going to have some sort of time-based signal that we're going to represent as a cosine function. Now, in our electrical circuits, they're always going to kind of look like these sines or cosines because they're going to be oscillating, but we also know from Fourier's theorem that any sort of uh, time-based signal can be represented as these sines or cosines. And if you remember from our previous video, all of these signals have some sort of amplitude, they have some sort of frequency, and then they have some sort of phase delay. Now, thanks to Euler's identity, we can then transform this signal into something that is in a polar coordinate system, in an exponential coordinate system that looks like this. So our A value stayed the same. And then what happened here was that all of this stuff sort of in the middle moved up to our exponent. And so when we do this transform from a time-based to a um, frequency base right there, we're just literally moving what's inside the cosine to the exponent and what's on the amplitude to the front. Now, once we have our signal represented like this, we can break it into two components because when I have things that are added in the exponent, I can rearrange them like this. So I can break out the first bit uh, when I distribute the imaginary term, and now I can break out the second bit here um, into these different components. So I, all I did here was I sort of distributed um, the uh, exponent here and broke these into two different pieces. When we rearrange really quickly, what we end up with is a function that looks like this. And so if you want to, if you want to turn back um, to our original equation, here is the amplitude, here is the phase, and then here is our frequency. Now, what we're going to end up caring about in all of this analysis is this bit right here. So this guy right here on the side, this is what's going to be called our phaser. And so we're going to take a lot of functions and we're going to take them from the time domain and turn them into an equivalent phaser representation. So this is just the math of showing you and convincing you how it works. Um, but what's happening right here is, is the general process of taking a time-based signal and turning it into a phaser. And I'll continue this with an example in just a second. If we had some sort of voltage that was oscillating over time, and my voltage looked like this, and the question was, what is the phaser representation of that signal? the phaser representation of that signal would be this expression right here. So the amplitude always moves to here, and then the phase component always moves to the exponent, but don't forget that we also have that imaginary number value there. And so you might be asking, well, what, what happened to the, the frequency that we were dealing with? Um, because we've moved from a time domain into a frequency domain, uh, the frequency is sort of implied. So this new expression we would write as V in terms of omega as the frequency there. Um, 
So don't worry that the frequency term is really gone. It's just sort of implied and we won't actually write it like this until we get to filters. So as a particular example, let's say that you were going to do some circuit analysis and somewhere in the book told you that the circuit was, a, was powered by a five cosine 1000 T plus 15 degrees uh, signal. The equivalent phasor representation of this would then be 5 e to the j 15 degrees. So my amplitude comes down to here and my uh, frequency, or excuse me, my phase comes down to here. So very, very simple transform. If I say what is the phasor representation of this time domain signal. So again, this is in the time domain. This is in the phasor domain. It's a simple transform between one and the other. Now there's going to be a lot of little details that we deal with in terms of these signals. What's going to be super annoying again is that this is in terms of degrees. So not radians like we were talking about with the frequency, but back again into degrees. Um, in degrees will be a pain when we deal with MATLAB, but, but just for, the, for now and the sake of dealing with your calculator and dealing with everything, we're going to talk about this in terms of degrees. Um, the frequency goes away, but the amplitude right here um, stays whatever the natural amplitude was. So this video is very quickly and hopefully simply, simply, not symphonically, shown you how to go from a time domain into the phasor domain. And what we'll see in the next video is what are some properties of these phasors. And then we'll jump into a whole recall of how to do polar coordinates and rectilinear coordinates and vectors um, such that we can do our math. Right now, we're sitting on techniques about how to transform our signals to make them do easier circuit analysis. We will eventually get to the point where we're comfortable with that and that we can return to our circuit analysis in terms of KCL, KVL, nodal that we're all familiar with. So in the next video, properties of phasers and what the heck we can do with them and a review of polar coordinates.